The Insta360 X3 is now 80 months old. That's not a short time for a consumer camera. I've taken hundreds of shots with this camera. The last ones just this weekend when I went skiing. Today we'll try to find out if the X3 is still worth it. To do that, I'm going to tell you the 10 things I still love about the X3. But I'm also going to tell you the 5 things I think are the biggest weaknesses of this camera. But I think it makes sense to start by briefly showing you what has happened in the last 18 months. Because the X3 has been continuously improved during this time via updates. Not only have bugs been removed, but a whole host of new features features have also been added. The X3 is now capable of pre-recording, which means that the 15 or 30 seconds before the shutter button is pressed can be saved. It can now be used as a webcam and there are now significantly more frame rates available than at launch. For example, 100 frames per second in 3K in 360 mode. For me personally, however, two other new features are more interesting. You can now reframe the 360 shot in the app and then continue reframing in the desktop app and export the shot. This is important because only with the desktop app can the recording be exported in the highest possible quality, that is in ProRes. And a new dive case has been released, which for the first time also enables 360 recordings underwater with an invisible selfie stick effect. I don't know of any other 360 camera that can do this. These are all important innovations, but I don't think they are decisive in determining whether or not this camera is worth buying. So let's move on to the 10 key strengths and the 5 weaknesses of the X3. I think the first strength is quite obvious and it's a strength that basically every 360 camera has, the reframing. It's simply a huge advantage if you can take a shot and then choose the right angle and post. You can also take 360 shots with the X3 and then play them back as 360 shots, but I think very few people will do that. Rather, it's just cool to press record without any major concerns and to have the certainty that you can still set the framing in the app so that it's correct. I think most people are less aware of the second strength. The Insta360 X3 has an extremely wide viewing angle. The standard field of view of an X3 shot is significantly wider than the field of view of a classic action camera, for example a GoPro or the Ace Pro. And that is a great advantage, especially for action shots. The extremely wide field of view results in a very immersive look and it is relatively easy to get everything important in the frame. Incidentally, the X3 also has a clearly wider viewing angle than the GoPro Max. I already did a detailed comparison between the X3 and the GoPro Max some time ago. So if you are interested in this comparison, you will find a link in the video description, as well as to all the videos that I will mention today. In Incidentally, the Insta360 X3 also has a very wide field of view in single lens mode. In single lens mode you can take classic non-360 shots, just like with a standard camera. And you can even do this with a resolution of 4K and at up to 30 frames per second. And even though it's great that you can take a quick shot now and then and not have to reframe it, so that you can also use the X3 like a conventional camera, the single lens mode is one of the X3's weaknesses for me. Yes, I'm happy that this mode is available, but the image quality can't quite keep up with the 4K image of a modern action camera. This is simply due to the slightly smaller sensors that are built into the X3. I would therefore only recommend the single lens mode in exceptional cases. One area where the X3 outperforms every action camera, however, is stabilization. This is perhaps also somewhat surprising. Of course, the Insta360 X3 also benefits from the extremely wide field of view. After all, the wider the field of view, the more stable the shot will look. And the X3 produces action shots that simply look incredibly stable and smooth. And I don't think many people are aware of that either. For me, the fantastic stabilization is one of the great strengths of the X3. And of course, this also applies to the invisible selfie stick effect. When you take a 360 shot, the selfie stick is automatically removed from the shot. No further editing is therefore necessary. Of course, this is another advantage that every 360 camera has. However, this effect has been implemented particularly well on the X3. And the stick attachment is barely visible. It's always cool and interesting to see what effect this has on your shot. Incidentally, you don't have to use a special selfie stick for this. Basically, any normal stick will do. The only important thing is that the camera is mounted straight on the stick. In recent years, several action camera manufacturers have introduced a feature that allows you to use an app to remove the selfie stick from a traditional shot taken with a non-360 camera. This is also possible with Insta360 Ace Pro recordings. However, this effect is applied afterwards in the app and is more like editing an image in Photoshop. Depending on the situation, artifacts may well be visible. In addition, the effect is usually only available in a low resolution and for a short clip. This effect can therefore not be compared with the invisible selfie stick effect of a 360 camera. Even though the X3 can shoot at up to 5.7K, you need to reframe each 360 shot and select the desired framing. 
basically you are cropping the 360 image. This will of course result in a reduced resolution of the shot you export at the end. Ultimately, you will end up with a recording in Full HD, so 1080. If you mainly watch your recordings on your smartphone or use them for social media, this is generally not too much of a problem. On a larger screen, however, we are now used to high resolution recordings. And of course, the reduced image quality then plays a role. I think this is probably the biggest weakness of the Insta360 X3 and basically of all other 360 cameras on the market. On the other hand, it's the reframing in combination with the invisible selfie stick effect that opens up completely new possibilities. If you have even the slightest creative streak and like to try out new things, then you will love this camera. With the X3 you can easily take shots that are not possible with a classic camera in this form. This is a completely new dimension of filmmaking. When reframing you can not only freely determine the shooting angle, you can also use keyframes to dynamically adjust the framing during the shot. Especially if you already own a classic action camera, even if it's a few years old, the added value of a 360 camera is much greater than the added value you would get if you bought a new action camera with slightly better image quality. For me, the creative aspect is the X3's greatest strength. The X3 offers another major advantage in this context, and that is the many mounts and accessories that Insta360 offers for this camera. It is the many different mounts that make the X3 so flexible to use. This shot, for example, was taken with the new ski pole mount. The mount disappears completely from the shot. There really are mounts for the X3 for every imaginable sport and activity. You can mount it in the most unusual places. And all the mounts are of absolutely high quality. I have made a video about the best and most useful mounts and accessories for the X3. If you watch it, you'll get a good idea of the possibilities this camera offers you. While the creative aspect is the biggest strength of this camera for me, there is of course a downside. You have to edit and reframe every single shot. As I said, I'm not a big fan of the single lens mode on this camera and use it almost exclusively in 360 mode. Personally, I now have a lot of practice reframing and it's quick and easy, also in the smartphone app of course, but I can understand if some people find it too cumbersome. But it is precisely in connection with the reframing that I see another particular strength of the X3. And that is the simple and quick operation of the Insta360 app. If you don't feel like keeping your subject in the center of the shot using keyframes, you can simply select your subject and have it tracked automatically. This can significantly simplify and speed up the reframing process. The app runs absolutely stable, is super easy to use and also includes a range of additional functions if needed. So you can adjust the viewing angle or the distortions. And now the smartphone app and the desktop app work together, as mentioned at the beginning. So you can select the framing in the smartphone app on the go and then continue working on it on the desktop and export the clip. What also cool is that the Insta360 app, especially for the X3, offers a variety of additional creative effects to enhance your clips. You can change the sky, add an AI generated effect to your clip, automatically simulate a drone shot. There are quite a few of these effects. Some are gimmicks of course, but as I said, especially if you have a creative streak and like to try something new, you can create some really cool clips with the many effects. Insta360 has been constantly adding new effects since the release of the X3. All of this is great and makes the Insta360 X3 an extremely versatile camera. But unfortunately, it's not suitable for every type of shot. As with every other 360 camera, the X3 also has two sensors and as you can imagine, these are not very large. This of course has disadvantages in low light conditions. Although I have made a detailed tutorial on how you can achieve decent results with the X3 in low light, it is best to use this camera in daylight and very very good lighting conditions. Only then will you achieve optimum image quality. Since I mostly use the X3 as an action camera, this is not such a big problem for me. But if you are looking for an all-purpose camera to take on vacation, you need to consider whether it is the right choice. One of the X3's strengths, however, is its high-quality body. The X3 is comfortable to hold, it's not too big, not too heavy, absolutely compact. The buttons work well and it also has a large, good display that is very responsive and easy to use. There is absolutely nothing to criticize about the build quality. And that also applies to the functionality of the X3. In 18 months I have never had any problems with overheating. Although of course overheating is not such a big problem here in the mountains. Unlike other cameras, the X3 has never caused any problems. I can't remember it ever crashing. The battery is replaceable and the battery life is absolutely adequate and sufficient for most 
most purposes. For me, reliability is therefore one of the great strengths of this camera. And as you may know, this is not a given in the action camera market. Unfortunately, there is still something that I miss about the X3. Especially because I mainly use the X3 as an action camera, I miss a high quality slow motion mode. In 5.7K, the highest possible frame rate is 30 frames per second. For slow motion, you have to reduce the resolution further. For 100 frames per second up to 3K. And this of course leads to a significant reduction in image quality. I would therefore not recommend this setting. The X3 currently costs $450, but Insta360 has interesting offers from time to time. At the moment you can get a good discount on the X3. You can find the link to the offer in the video description. If you buy via the link, you will also receive a free gift. In short, I would say that the X3 is still an absolutely capable camera. What I love most about this camera is the endless possibilities offered by the reframing, the invisible selfie stick effect and the easy to use app. Yes, I do miss a higher resolution and a higher quality single lens mode. Especially because I mainly edit and watch my videos on a large monitor and less on my smartphone. But for a higher resolution, We'll probably have to wait for a possible X4. If you're interested in how the X3 compares to the GoPro Max or the Go3 or the Ace Pro, you can find corresponding videos on my channel. Just like for the tutorials I mentioned today, you will find a link to these videos in the video description. If you found this video interesting, give me a like as feedback. There will be more videos about the X3, so stay tuned and see you next time!